Okay, gotta address two things before we start with this video. Um, I gave myself a concussion at work. Don't know. Uh, I'm a part-time WWE superstar on the weekends, and uh, I uh, was trying to do my finisher off the top rope, and I got cucked with a steel chair. So it's very unfortunate. I can barely talk, <laughs> uh, which brings me to my second point. Yo, I'm gonna be saying some dumb probably throughout this video. Like, I'm gonna stumble over my words. My tongue's gonna have a couple of aneurysms. And we're gonna probably go off topic a lot. And that's because, like, you're like, I literally have a concussion right now. So I'm feeling a little bit better today. So uh, I thought maybe we'd at least try to make a video. Um, so if it sounds like I'm trying to give you an ASMR voice by whispering or whatever, that is not my intention at all. Now, I do want to clarify one thing. I'm not calling these brands Instagram brands because, like, I think that they're Instagram brands, like the literal term. Like, if I'm being honest, the reason why I'm using that term, you know, best Instagram brands, is so that you click the video. <laughs> like, I feel like most people are more in interested in, like, fast fashion, trendy fashion, Instagram fashion than they are, like, high luxury fashion brands. So when I say Instagram fashion brands, I really just mean independently owned brands. So I think we covered all of the formalities. And also let me say, all of these brands I like and I follow, except for one maybe. So it's not like any of these brands are bad. And I think really what it comes down to is personal preference and aesthetic. I don't want this list to be like, oh, what would I wear personally? I'm trying to take in more account than just that. So without further ado and enough yapping out of the way, let's, uh, let's get into rating these guys. So first up we have PATH uh, or Post Archive Fashion. What I, my opinion of PATH is that they are a pretty good mix between like ready to wear and runway type of fashion, but deeply rooted in like that corp core techie kind of aesthetic, which I think is really interesting because I feel there aren't a lot of, at least that I'm exposed to on a daily basis, a lot of independent fashion brands that are taking on that kind of aesthetic, but in a more elevated and more avant-garde and more artistic way than your traditional, you know, Arc'teryx or Gore-Tex type of, you know, clothing pieces. And I feel like if you're someone who is really into like techwear, Gorpcore, this would definitely be like your, up your alley if you're trying to like elevate your wardrobe or you know, get some crazy pieces. Yeah, taking a look at their Instagram page. Again, I'm, in, I'm assuming most of you guys watching this already know who Path is and already know kind of like what their aesthetic is and what they look like. But um, if I could just pick out something like this. It looks familiar enough to not put you off entirely from looking at it, but at the same time, it is very different from your everyday type of clothing. Um, this is obviously more avant-garde, like I don't know where bro is going, where it dressed like this, like at all, but um, you know, it's cool to look at. People who don't understand high fashion or don't want to understand high fashion or just look at this and be like, all right, bro, well, what, what are you gonna do with this? Where are you gonna wear this? And they're right, but that's not the point of like why brands would make something like this, right? Who knows? You know, maybe someone wants to wear this, whatever this is, and wear it to make it on like their, their grocery store run. You know, more power to them. That's definitely not my cup of tea at all. But, um, you know, I know there's a lot of fashion ninjas out there now. And actually, hold on. For all my fashion ninjas out there, it could literally be a fashion ninja with this brand like i don't know what ops this guy is ready to fight but he's ready to fight them like this is straight up ninja komoi drip is it not you can't tell me this isn't straight out of like an anime okay so again this brand's got something for everyone okay and speaking of having something for everyone boy do they have something for me something that i think path is really strong in is their shoe collaborations kind of like kiko very very desperately hunting for a pair of all black trainers while i really appreciate kiko i don't like all of his asic collabs i think some of them are just kind of like hyped because it's kiko and the one that i really want the brand or the the size that i need is like extinct and they're extremely expensive so i know that these got teased or whatever back in january and trying to find concrete, I'm trying to find like concrete, um, I'm trying to find like, like concrete, concrete launch details and dates about these are like next to impossible. So if anyone knows anything about this drop coming up, please let me know because I really want a pair of these. Probably the only thing that I'm really interested in buying from Path at this moment in time. But again, it's not what this video is about. It's about how I perceive the brand image as a whole and where I think they rate on this tier list. And seeing it as this is the only brand on here 
that has actually been formally acknowledged by LVMH and actually almost won a prize. I feel like they absolutely have to be in the LVMH ready category off that alone, but aside from that, I do think they just make really elite top tier clothing and really push boundaries that not a lot of brands that I see in that kind of space of, you know, Gorp Core and Techwear doing at the moment. Okay, so next up that brings us to Pearl Ivory. Go over to their Instagram. Let me try to find this piece. This is their take on like that traditional puffer jacket, but do we see what they used to make this? The entire shell is made of 100% Italian lambskin for $625. That is so insane in today's market because if a brand like Givenchy, Gucci, Prada, fuck even Dries, bro, even VD. VD has made a, a lambskin jacket and that was $1,300. So you could only imagine what some of these you know, high luxury fashion brands would charge for something like this. This is what I mean by like, if there's one thing that you can't take away from Pearl Ivory, it's the fact that they are using, I'm not going to say that they're using the most premium Italian lambskin on the market because I have no idea. I'm not in their factories or anything like that, but they're using Italian lambskin on, in their products and they're charging like normal human prices for it, which is crazy because there are so many brands overcharging and getting away with overcharging that I feel they could easily be charging double that price for something like this. Another thing that I really like from Pearl Ivory and is probably what Pearl Ivory is known for the most is their accessories and their bags. Um, I personally am really excited for their new belts coming out very soon, specifically this one. I think the other thing that Pearl Ivory is really known for is their bags, obviously. Um, their brute bag is really interesting and really sick with the zipper being on the bottom. It's like a mini version of their brute bag. Again, very interesting design with the zip on the bottom. I feel like not a lot of brands do that. I think that uh, for such a young brand that Pearl Ivory is, they already have such good brand differentiators from other competitors. And they do it in a way that doesn't use branding, which I hate branding. I'm not a, I'm not a logo person whatsoever at all. So, you know, obviously I think the two biggest differentiators that Pearl Ivory does so well is one with their bag. I think everyone knows on that follow, you know, these kind of fashion brands on Instagram, they know what the brute bag is and where it comes from now. And the other brand differentiator is their use of materials. Their, their premium materials for such an affordable price. So I'm actually having a hard time ranking Pearl Ivory just because I think they are good. I think they are really good. I still think there's room to grow though. I think I think I'd have to put them in has potential. The reason why I'm putting them as has potential not very good is because again, they are so new. They have so few collections. And I know that they're trending in a really good place right now with all the new stuff that they're teasing. But I don't think they're even close to how good they could be in the future. So putting them in has potential is like no slight to Pearl Ivory at all. I just think that they are on such like a good upwards trend right now that it'd be kind of selling them short to put them in very good because I, I know they can do so much better than what they already have put out, but really like their brand a lot. Um, and I'm really excited to see what they put out in the future. I need a fat nap after this video. Up next, we have K2 Studios. Again, really interesting brand. Yeah, I think their design aesthetic um, actually crosses between a couple of different brands that I like. Obviously, kind of like Vuja Day, kind of like O Files. Oh shit, did I put O Files on this list? Okay, I'm gonna have to add them. They're supposed to be on this list too. But yeah, their aesthetic kind of reminds me of like O Files, Vuja Day. I mean, these look exactly like the Balenciaga cargos. So, you know, they've definitely done their research on like, you know, popular streetwear brands and aesthetics at the moment. But since they have such a small body of work to go off of, and I feel like they haven't done anything that's super revolutionary or, you know, a trademark item that everyone can go and recognize that, you know, is their brand. Um, I feel like, yeah, but I put Pearl Ivory and has potential. I feel like Pearl Ivory is ahead of K2 Studios at this moment. Not as good as the rest. Oh, this actually sucks. But I do think they have potential. I definitely do think they have a lot of potential. Has potential, not as good. Has potential, not as good. I feel like since I can see the potential in them, I'm going to go ahead and put them as has potential. Maybe what I'll do as well is I, as I add brands into each tier, from left to right, it will be like um, like first, second, third, etc. So like uh, this is me saying that Pearl Ivory is ahead of K2, but they're in the same 
Same tier, if that makes sense. We're all Gen Z. We know how to read tier lists at this point, okay, bro? I'm gonna have to start speed running some of these because, yeah, it's getting to that point where I can't exactly read straight anymore. All right, next we have Object 22. I almost said 29 because, yeah, we're fighting demons right now. Object 22 from Adriel. Shout out, Adriel. You're the GOAT. I love you. Big inspiration of why I started my own channel, actually, was your pickups videos. Really liked your format and all that. But that's enough glazing. This isn't about Adriel. This is about Object 22. Object 22 is a... I'm going to stop even trying to ca categorize these brands. And I'm just going to show you their Instagram page because I'm going to make a fool of myself. Um, between this concussion and me just being rebooted, I'm just not going to even try it anymore. But yeah, Object 22. Absolutely love Object 22. Now, again... Really new brand, not a, lot of not a huge body of work. I feel like this brand is unique enough to differentiate themselves from a million other brands who are all making black baggy jeans, all making boxy cropped hoodies that are all making some type of knitwear, right? I feel like that is such like a trendy thing to do, especially with you know these startup brands on social media. But again, I feel they're doing it in a way that is truly unique they're not just doing it to make money i feel i can definitely see that adriel is passionate about his work and passionate about making clothes and has like a clear vision with how he's designing certain things now i don't own anything from object 22 yet and the two biggest reasons why is one when the blood clot um knit dropped your boy just didn't have the funds to buy it which was unfortunate um the other thing is that they're based in New Zealand or Australia? Honestly, I don't know what the difference is between New Zealand and Australia still. Like, is it not just the same place? But um, I just remember going to their website and seeing the shipping costs, and that was crazy. So I, I get it. It has nothing to do with them. Um, it's unfortunate that ju they just live in, like, the middle of fucking nowhere in the ocean, and they have to charge ridiculous prices to get products to people. But that, it is just what it is, what it is you know? So that was like one of the biggest reasons why I haven't purchased anything from them specifically, particularly. Dude, I don't even know what I'm saying. They dropped, in my opinion, they dropped two really sick items so far with that blood clot sweater. I already gave you the reason why I didn't purchase that. And then we have like the nocturnal jeans. Big reason why I didn't buy these was because I already owned the Acne 2021 M jeans, which I wear like I wear like every every day almost, right? And I feel like these are a great alternative like a great alternative to those jeans actually i don't know why i didn't mention that in my pickups video now that i think about it because i know people were asking me in my comments about like what's a good alternative to um those acne jeans it's this right here and somar when we get to somar they make a good alternative as well but um yeah really really sick pair of jeans i just i can't justify spending money on them because like i already own something that's exactly like them um and maybe even slightly better in my opinion. But yeah, really sick pair of jeans. Aside from the silhouette, um, again, because anyone can make a baggy pair of pants, but what I what really makes me fall in love with denim is like the subtle details. Uh, one huge thing is like the, the type of patch that are used on jeans. Um, they have the like scar stitched detail as well. But I mean, just look at like the little attention to details. I really like the use of like these flat rivet kind of buttons it's just very minimal it gives it like a really cool punkish just futuristic type of vibe again really sick tumbled leather back tab patch with their you know embossed logo yeah just really clean really clean pair of pants and like bro i swear to god i i'm not even kidding i thought i just clicked on acne's website because bro is this not acne studios is is this hang on but they don't have like the <laughs> they don't have like the like all right anyways <laughs> but but yeah, you can't tell me you can't tell me they didn't get inspiration from from Acne Studios. But I'm just I'm just fucking around. So, but yeah, these jeans are fire. These jeans are absolutely fire. Um, I think this brand is insanely good. And even though that they don't have that many you know pieces or collections or drops or whatever you want to call it, um, yeah, they're going straight to very good. If they had a bigger body of work, maybe I'd put them in LVMH ready. Um, I'm really interested to see where, you know, Object 22 goes, obviously. Okay, so next we have Ore. I'm not gonna talk too much about Ore because I've talked about Ore on a lot of my videos, my pickup videos, um, but for people who, what's just happened? Okay, there we go. Oh my 
God, and these were so fucking fire, bro. Ow. All right, look. I'm going to glaze for... God damn, bro. God damn it. I, all right, so... I'm going to glaze for... I'm going to set a timer. Ray makes some of the best footwear I have ever seen. Period. Doesn't matter if I'm talking about independent brands, not if I'm talking about LVMH brands, high luxury brands, whatever you want to talk like, refer to them as. He literally makes some of the best footwear I have literally ever seen in my entire life. The attention to detail, the craftsmanship, the materials used, the comfort, the wearability, the vibrant soul. Like, everything he does is so perfect but so simple at the same time. I, like, obviously, you guys know I own the infantry derbies, which is like the best chunky derby I've ever seen. Um, and these helios. Oh, mm, I want them so bad, but I just don't have the money to spend them at the moment. There's other things I need to buy. But, like, he, he literally can do no wrong with footwear at the moment. And there's that timer. So, yeah, all, all, like, joking and glazing aside, I seriously do think that Ray and Ray New York make some of the best footwear, if not the best footwear, at the price point. And that's the thing. Again, going back to, like, the pearled ivory thing that I was talking about. If you have ever owned an RA like New York footwear piece and you've owned other high luxury fashion brand footwear pieces of the same like category. So like I've I've had Dries um I've had Dries derbies. I've tried Prada derbies. I've went in the store and tried Bottega derbies and um Balenci derbies. It's there. Like like the quality, I can't really say that about probably any other brand on this list even Bujade this brand is so far ahead of like anything else in terms of craftsmanship and quality that it's actually insane that he charges such such small fees for these shoes and I feel like another thing that he does so well is that he has something for everybody he's he has sneakers right this is like, you know, the, his take on the, the the Chuck Taylor silhouette, you know, with how Rick Owens is like the Ramones or whatever. He's got something for for that audience. He has the Stelvios, which are just ab like, bro, I gotta chill. I gotta chill because my head is hurting. Let me look at the bot derbies. The bot derbies are crazy. Look at the, the combat boots. The combat boots are crazy. Like, it's just such a solid brand that there's... They're only gonna go up. And it's kind of unfortunate because his footwear is so good that it kind of overshadows his clothes, which I think his clothing is also like insane as well. Like he just, you know, that this sweater is crazy. Um, this denim set, this vector denim set, which I think it's called is, is crazy. And I know we already set the one minute timer for glazing, but you know, they're so good. We gotta go into extra time right now because what I'm about to say, a lot of you probably are gonna be like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're just, you're just glazing out your ass now. This brand, is out of every brand on this entire tier list is by far the best brand in terms of where I think you should invest your money because what you're getting for the price is so it still blows my mind that he sells them for for that cheap I think he could easily be charging double the price for most of his shoes all right so as you can tell <laughs> We have two new brands on this list that I forgot to add, and that is because your boy, again, is concussed. Um, and uh, I just forgot to add them completely. So we have Commaware, and uh, this is supposed to be O-Files, but it's a gray circle because it's Ken Kenfluence. Up next, Simple Project. Basically, I got put on this brand by my boy, Andrew. Um, he's a crazy Simple Project glazer. Ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. I just gotta say how it is. There's nothing wrong with that, but... But yeah, really, these are oh, these dropped, I think, today, like the images of them. And I'm really into Afix right now. And this reminds me of like a sheer Afix shirt that I'm actually looking at getting. I don't really know how to talk about Simple Project because like, again, I didn't research this video because this is a filler video. Okay, this is a substitution video. I'm giving you, I'm giving you extra content when I'm literally mentally incapable of driving to a store or working or reading. So to bear with me on that but if i had to classify this brand with an aesthetic i'd say it's asian our legacy yeah hate me if you want i don't care asian our legacy they have competitive prices they have interesting designs their clothes are very wearable they're like the perfect blend of trendy but not too trendy to the point where like i want to throw up because i've seen it ten thousand times on my for you page and then they also have that i'm not going to call them kiko aesthetic kind of Kiko coded, but you know, some of their shit with their darts and stuff, it is kind of, you know, more Kiko comma esque, but not fully to that degree. Right. Overall, really cool brand. Um, excited again to see more of what they drop just because they don't have that many collections out yet. And I can definitely see myself, um, bro, is this not, not I swear to I swear to God, this exact outfit looks just like something that our legacy just dropped in their newest season, bro. I swear to you. 
but yeah, I can definitely see myself um, purchasing something from them in the future. Uh, just not at the moment, but you know, really, I, and I was, is this not straight from Vuja Day's website, bro? Hold on. Ah, bro. A swagger jack and my boy, Kenny. Hang on. No, 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 no. Because I keep my receipts. Where is it? It's on their Instagram. I'm going to find this fucking picture because this is great. Come on, bro. When did this belt, when did this belt drop? Hold on. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. But yeah, all jokes aside, it is a cool brand. I think it's an up and comer, very sleeper, really affordable, like really affordable. And again, can't wait to see what comes from them in the future. But at this moment in time, I'm going to put them as, as potential because I do think they have potential. But from what I've seen so far, just, you know, not quite as good as the rest. And in this tier, I definitely think they're behind the other two that are, uh, are within this class. All right, and next up we got Vuja Day. <laughs> Vuja Day is this brand based from Japan. Uh, creative directors, you guys really sit there and think for how much I already fucking glazed them in all my other videos, and how much I talked about them on Instagram, and how much I dick ride them in every fucking video, and every waking second of my every fucking day. That I was really about to sit here for thirty minutes and talk about Vuja Day with a concussion. Out of your fucking mind. Next, we have Somar. A uh, brand based in LA. Represent. Why well, I said that because I fucking hate it here. Somar is a sick up and coming brand as well. I think the aesthetic of Somar is actually really sick. Um, some of it is a little too grungy for my liking, but again, my personal preference isn't really what we're talking about in this video. I think some of this stuff, like these, I don't really care for, but. Um, other other things like this new wax set that he saw, he dropped like that that come on that's fire and for three hundred and nineteen dollars that's fire uh oh yeah and like it's like this weird kink about tassels or something like I don't really know what that's all about but I mean it's cool I guess it's a brand differentiator so you know I don't judge I will say. Some of the stuff in the past wasn't really my thing, but again, back on the topic of, you know, really great alternatives for the Acne 20, I keep saying the word like um, cheaper alternative, but it's not really a cheaper alternative to the 21M jeans, neither were the nocturnal jeans. It's more of like a, if you like this, let me recommend you this type of thing. But again, for the same reason that I gave for the nocturnal jeans, the only reason why I didn't buy these is because I already owned the 21M jeans. And I feel like they just filled the same need in my closet. And I just don't have the disposable income right now to just be buying multiple of the same kind of thing right now in my in my closet. So that's the only reason why I passed on them. But I think this is a really good brand. I still don't think that he's reached his potential yet um, with his collections. And the reason why I think that is because I think this waxed uh, denim set, the denim, I don't even know. But this wax set, like by far blows anything else that he's ever made out of the water except for the Ahab denim because I also think that's probably some of the best. So I can't really put him in very good, but I will put him in has potential and I'll put him above Simple Project just because I do think he has more I put him above, you know, I'll put him above K2 Studios as well because I do really like Somar a lot. And I think that this set alone just really showed me that he is not playing around when it comes to designing clothes. And I really like the fact that he references Raph, but in a in a way that doesn't seem like he's just straight copying it um, and making it a way that maybe is more popular with today's generation of people who are into fashion. So and with all of that and a price point that people who actually appreciate the, these type of works can actually go and buy them, right? So I think that's the biggest thing. It's cool and all to have your favorite designer, have your favorite brand, have your favorite silhouette or jacket that you want to wear, but can never buy it because it's just too expensive, right? So the fact that I can appreciate this and go buy it without like having like an end game job, right, is really cool. So so that was enough about Somar. Um, and now we are getting it down to the last couple. What is my runtime right now? Oh my God, we, we are cooked. We are so cooked. I'm going to go into a coma. I'm going to go into a coma after this video is over. If that isn't worth a like and a subscribe, I don't know what is. Next up, we have FFFFFP. We have fucking. All right, so next up, we have Triple F Postal Service. I have no idea 
why what the story is behind this name, but I'm sure there's something significant about it because trying to say FFFF Postal Service is so cringe. So I'm just going to refer to them as, you know, either Triple F or Postal Service. I don't really know. If you guys are like diehard Postal Service fans, tell me like what you guys refer to the brand as because I'm not even sure myself. So I think Postal Service is definitely in that um, post archive fashion and even maybe even a little bit of commaware type of competition slash category where they're definitely doing that. I wouldn't call them Gorp Core, but it's definitely techware, super extreme techware, the point where like I can't really gravitate for, is that Kendrick? Bro, can't you just be wearing anything, huh? Um, but yeah, like, it's just super, it's like too out there for me personally, but looking at it, bro, like, are we in Tatooine? Like, this guy's on a set of Dune right now. Where is he? Where is bro? But yeah, you can kind of get the vibe of this brand. Uh, not for me. Like, I don't know where I'm wearing this to. I don't know where he's wearing it to either, but it's fire, right? Like, it just looks crazy. Like, who else is, like, trim like i don't know what that means but yeah bro it's trim as fuck but yeah i think it's really interesting i really like too how they don't necessarily have branding in terms of logos like obvious logos but one thing that um postal service does a lot is they use this really like sick looking um i don't even know what this logo is supposed to be but in a lot of their jackets they redo the logo into the silhouette which I can't say that I've ever seen that about any other brand um, done like in this kind of fashion, right? So it's really a subtle way to incorporate your logo back into your clothing, which I think is really cool. But where do I put it? I feel like because, because Postal Service has so many collections and so many pieces out there already, like they don't have that much, right? But like they have a lot. They have more than a lot of these brands on here. I feel like I can't put them in has potential. So it either has to be very good or it has to be not as good as the rest. And because we have a path, because we have a comma where, I feel like they can't be very good. So as much as this hurts, I have to put them in not as good as the rest. But again, I like them because every, every, every brand on this list, I like in some shape or form. But like we have four categories. I got to use all four categories, right? So unfortunately... FFFFP, Postal P, they gotta go and not as good as the rest, unfortunately. We finally made it to the final three. D Sims, Daniel Simmons. If you found this video and you don't know who Daniel Simmons is, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like, I literally don't. D Sims is the absolute goat of Instagram, YouTube, fashion, whatever. I honestly, I will go as far as to say that if it wasn't for Daniel Simmons, I feel like fashion wouldn't be nearly as popular especially on platforms like instagram and tiktok he literally made the template for get ready with me's okay not only fashion get ready with me's but he made it so that every little category has a get ready with me like you know the cosmetic get ready with me's like you know insert your niche category here get ready with me so flowers or flowers are due with all that being said his clothes suck I like just showing the website's a better way of articulating my thoughts without actually having to talk because at this point, my brain is so cooked that I feel like I'm going to make a fool of myself more than I already have in this video. Like before you like be like, oh, but that's his aesthetic. I get it. I get why he makes clothes like this. Loves the row. He loves like costs even. I don't know. It's just like, why make clothes like this when so many other forms of this exact type of clothing exist already somewhere else? When we pull up the Koss Atelier, in my opinion, this is more interesting. If I'm comparing you to Koss, there's a problem. I get it. He's going for the simple, timeless, classic look. I just don't understand why you feel the need to make clothes that already exist. I, I get it. This is your Cole Buxton like influence. This is your Roe slash Koss influence. This is your Our Legacy influence. But it's done in a way that is just too... He even used our legacy boots. It's just done in a way that's just like, why would I ever buy from you over, over costs? Why would I ever buy from you over our legacy? Especially when you're pricing not competitively. Like, I, I get it. The quality is probably there. The quality is probably immaculate. I watch all your videos, bro. Like, I know the quality is there. But it's just like, the interest and the intrigue is just not. And this has nothing to do with me not... Like, you know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, that's just not your aesthetic. 
I mean, it kind of is. I am into that quiet luxury, like, side of fashion. I really do. I mean, I, I don't know. I can't really afford any of the row, but I really appreciate the row. I am into brands that Daniel is into and that he obviously gets ins- inspiration from, like, Our Legacy and other brands like that. But it's just, like, this just screams vanilla ice cream. And if you love vanilla ice cream, you probably will love this. But at the same time, why are you paying for Briars or Dryers vanilla ice cream when the the Walmart brand or the Costco brand, Kirkland brand ice cream is going to do the same thing for less? It's vanilla ice cream. I feel like, why would you overpay for vanilla ice cream? That just doesn't make sense to me. Like, I don't know where vanilla ice cream came from, but that analogy just made the most sense to me. It's really boring, and I've seen it other places. And that's not to say, that is not, I am not trying to discourage, I sound so goofy, I'm not trying to discourage him from stop making clothes, but who cares what I think at the end of the day? That's why I don't want anyone to take this super deep, I'm just yapping, I'm just a yapper, I'm just a big yapper. I'm not saying all this because I don't think Daniel can't make good clothes, and I'm not saying that because I don't think he will make good clothes, this is just a tier list, it's just a brain dead tier list, but Daniel, I'm sorry, easily... The worst brand on this entire list out of everyone not worst as in like it's a trash brand because i don't think it's trash okay a little better than most of the stuff out there but for the price for the lack of uniqueness that it gives off because you can be unique and still simple at the same time you can be quiet luxury and and elevated and sophisticated at the same time it's not two separate things right that's why the brands like the row are so popular and so expensive and so inspirational to other brands who try to like take from what what they did make it successful like you can do quite luxury elevated sophisticated in a good way and like at the end of the day this this like this company this brand whatever you want to call it doesn't come off to me as like a fashion house or a brand with promise it comes off to me as elevated merch which really hurt to say out loud because i really love daniel but that's just how I feel about it at this moment. So, comma wear, comma wear, comma wear. And now that we're on comma wear, I feel like this is the bit, this will explain to you guys why I put something like, you know, postal service and not as good as the rest is because I feel like there's like, there's like, there's levels to this, right? Obviously, comma wear often gets compared to Vujade. And, and while I, I'm, I'm guilty of that as well, I feel like they are closer to like a postal service type of like, uh, that's what I'm looking for, like competition. They're actually kind of right in the middle because I feel like, I feel like you have postal service over here, which is like extremely tech wear. And I feel like you have Bougie over here, which is like more, um, more like not quiet luxury, but more on that side. So like, I feel like comma wear kind of treads that line in between both. So they are kind of competing with both still, but I feel they definitely do. I feel like they're definitely ahead of Postal Service, but definitely behind um, Vuja Day, which I know a lot of people probably would disagree with me on that. But again, someone who lives in the West, for someone who lives in the United States, for someone who lives in California, I just think that Vuja Day is way more wearable than Kama Wear. But that's not to say that Kama Wear doesn't have the most fire pieces in some of their categories right like like i don't even have to scroll that's how you know it's a good that's how you know it's a good brand when i don't have to scroll to find something fire i just click on this first tile in this top row we have the takeda takata potato patata school uniform it is so absolutely unbelievably fire now hey it's our boy uh one thing i will say that i don't oh my god bro can we just talk about how mario is just a cheat code I don't know why I just said that. Like, that has nothing to do with this video at all. But um, it's just the one thing I absolutely cannot stand about this brand, which obviously shows it's just not for me because I know that is it's why everyone loves them so much is because of this fucking DJ knob that they put on all their clothes. I just can't. I just can't do it. Like, it's just not. It's just not for me. I think it's extremely tacky. Um, I think it's just completely overused, and I just don't understand why anyone would want this on their clothing and every time i see one of these items on instagram when they're like showing it off in like a short or something like a fit check and like they're like taking the little thing and like showing that it's a magnet suction cup i I just can't i just can't do it um i think it looks really sick on their bags but on their clothes i don't want dj knobs on my clothes um so again really personal thing and i sound like a hater but it's just 
it is just what it is, you know? See, the problem I have with Comware is, like, most of their stuff is unwearable for me, very personal. But the stuff that would be wearable, it's like, I wouldn't buy it over Vuja Day. So it's like, where do I put them? Where do I rank that? You know? But again, with this list, this tier list has, this has nothing to do with if I'd wear it or not. It's just, it, do I appreciate it, its design language? Do I like its aesthetic? Do I think it's cool? Do I like what they're doing? I do think Comware does make very good and very cool clothes. Um, and for that reason, I am going to put them in very good, and I'm going to put them ahead of Object 22 because they're just, they're just ahead of Object 22 at this point. Not saying I would definitely wear Object 22 over Comware, but like, let's be real, Comware is definitely ahead of Object 22. Now that leaves us with the last one, and that is O Files. Let's talk about O Files. Uh, this is from Oscar. If you're Vuja Day Coded, you definitely know about O Files and Oscar. Just remember what I said about Daniel Simmons? Whereas I, I know that he truly is trying to make clothes that are a direct representation of his inspirations, but it just comes across as Cas Atelier. Um, Oscar takes this, like what he's inspired by. You can obviously see it with like the origami pants, like how he, you know, he's kind of, no hate to Oscar, I love Oscar. He's kind of a weeboo, okay? And the Ken influence is going crazy. But with all that being said, he still makes very unique, crazy pieces that, oh, like, this styling, by the way, like, yeah, the pieces are sick, but whoever styled that, I don't know who styled this. I don't know if Oscar did it or if he has, like, a team member who did it. That is crazy. This could be in vogue. Like, this this image right here is LVMH ready, okay? But, like I was saying, he's really inspired by military wear, really inspired by Japanese culture, um, obviously his Danish roots, so things need to, you know, have substance and hold up in the winters. Um I'm literally just yapping on my ass right now, but I feel like somewhere in what I just said, something made sense to somebody out there. But I think O-Files has a lot, a lot of potential to be a brand that is not only like extremely big on social media, but something that I personally will start gravitating towards more in the future and eventually could even be on Paris Fashion Week. I think uh, as well, like Vuja Day, like he's come so far in his aesthetic and really finding himself but yeah where am i going to put o files um let's see they have been around long enough to where i feel like putting them has and has potential is kind of hard but they're definitely not as good as the rest or like <laughs> they're definitely not in the category of not as good as the rest so i will put them in very good and i will put them i'm gonna put them above object 22 but behind comma where i think that is fair oh, i cannot wait okay so if you guys if you guys like follow me on Instagram and like, you know, you know who you guys are who like always DM me on Instagram. Like almost 90% of my followers follow every single brand that are on this list. Please leave a comment and DM me on Instagram. Like, like comment on this, comment on this, on this, <laughs> comment on this video because I really want to see what people have to think about my opinions on this. I really want a conversation to start in the comments about how people would rank their list with my reasoning again guys this is not about what i would wear personally okay so i really want to see your guys's lists where was i wrong where was i right i think some really interesting conversations slash arguments <laughs> really more arguments are probably going to start in the comments about this but let me know um, tell me how stupid and ridiculous I am for having my top three, Vuja Day, Ore, and Path. Um, and uh, also, if you want a part two, let me know. Out of all the videos that I've made so far, this was probably the most fun I've had making a video since starting to make videos because I just love tier lists. I do tier lists all the time with my friends, like in Discord calls. So this was just, and I used to stream on Twitch. So like this kind of setting, this format was very natural to me and very, very enjoyable for me to make even with this 808 drum going off of my head. Hopefully I recover. I will not be making another video until this, this concussion goes away because this actually was extremely difficult. I hope you guys like this one and I will hopefully see you relatively kind of soon. So peace.